All right, we are in lesson 15. Our objective for today says I will be able to use the distributive property. The distributive property and the product property to simplify expressions. Now, distributive property is something that you've probably seen, hoping you've seen it in seventh grade, hopefully even sixth grade, and then the product property is something that we did in lesson three. So this is basically just putting two things together. What this says is the distributive property can be used to simplify expressions. Since subtraction is the same thing as adding the opposite, the distributive property will also work with subtraction. So the distributive property basically just says if you have a number on the outside of two numbers being added or subtracted on the inside of parentheses, you can distribute or multiply that number on the outside by these two on the inside. So A, open parentheses, B plus C is the same thing as AB plus AC. So, basically here, this is just showing you that the distributive property is the same thing. You'll get the same answer if you, as if you follow order of operations. Because this, I could just follow my order of operations. Remember, grouping symbols, exponents, multiplication, division, addition, subtraction. I'm going to work inside my grouping symbols first. 4 plus 8 is 12. 6 times 12 gives me 72. But what I noticed is that if I did the distributive property, I would get the same thing. Because 6 times 4 gives me 24. And then 6 times 8 gives me 48. I brought down the plus sign in the middle. Now I add 24 plus 48, and I get 72. Basically, the distributive property is the most helpful when you've got variables in here. If this was a plus 8, I can't combine a and 8 because those are not like terms. So it would be helpful to have the distributive property. So the distributive property works the same way as following the order of operations. Same thing here. Now, I've got 4 times 5. I've got 4 times 3. 4 times 5 is 20. 4 times 3 is 12. I bring down the subtraction sign in the middle. Now, 20 minus 12 gives me an 8. One other thing I notice about this subtraction sign, though. We said that subtraction, remember, is the same thing as adding a negative. Remember, change the subtraction to addition, change the sign of the second term. So when you see a subtraction sign, what I want you to get used to thinking is, oh, that's the same thing as a negative. So this would be like 5 plus negative 3. Because when you've got something, we'll get to that in just a second. Let's keep with this. Because here I've got a negative sign on the outside that I am distributing. This negative, you don't see a coefficient there. Remember, the understood coefficient is 1. So that's a negative 1 times 9, which gives me a negative 9. Now I've got a negative 1 times 4, which gives me a negative 4. Now I've got negative 9 plus negative 4. Remember, we go same signs, add and keep, different signs, subtract. These signs are the same, so we add 9 plus 4 gives me 13. Keep the sign as negative. Now here, I've got a negative 9 times a negative 6. A negative times a negative. Remember, we're distributing, or distributing is the same thing as multiplying. Distributing this 9 to both terms. All right, just like here, I didn't draw the arrow here, but I distributed it to both terms. Always remember, both terms. A negative times a negative gives me a positive 54. Now watch this. Remember, this subtraction is the same thing as adding a negative. So this is just like a negative 9 times a negative 3. A negative times a negative gives me a positive 12. So now I've just got 54 plus 12. 12. Oh, sorry, 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 that's not a 12. That's a 27. 9 times 3 gives me 27. So I've got 54 plus 27, which gives me 81. Remember to distribute to both terms. And remember, if you've got a subtraction sign right here, just go ahead and view that as a negative because subtracting is the same thing as adding a negative. So let's do that here. Now, again, this is where this is most helpful because I've got a variable here. I can't combine these two, so I've got to distribute this negative 4 to both of these terms. Negative 4 times x just gives me negative 4x, and then negative 4 times 7 gives me a negative 28. So this is, the set. This is you could either write this as negative 4x minus 28 like I've got it here, or that's the exact same thing as negative 4x plus negative 28. Now these two you cannot combine because they are not like terms. But notice, I've got a negative 4 times a positive 7, so I could write that as subtraction because this is a negative. Negative times positive gives me a negative. I could write it as subtraction or I could write it as adding the opposite. Now here, 
what you will notice is that the 6 is on the right side. That does not matter, okay? It's the same thing. We're still distributing it to both terms, okay? 6 times 5 gives me 30. Now, watch this. Look at this sign. That's a subtraction sign. I told you to view that as a negative. So this is just like a negative x. So this is 6 times negative x, which gives me minus 6x. Remember, subtraction is the same thing as adding the opposite. So this is 30 minus 6x. Or again, if it helps, you could write this as 30 plus negative 6x. Subtraction is the same thing as adding the opposite. Okay? Last one. Now, this is where we start to get into the product property. I've got mn times mx plus ny plus 2p. So I'm distributing this to all of these terms. Now watch. nm times mx. I've got m times m. I've got an m here, and I've got an m here. m times m. Remember, keep that base. Don't touch. Don't touch. Add that power. That's not asking too much. m times m gives me m squared. So that is m squared, and then this n and this x, those two are not alike. I can't combine them. I don't add any exponents, so I just write them right next to each other, which means multiplication. Now, all I just did right there is I distributed this m n to this first term. Now I have to distribute this mn to this second term, okay? So I've got an m. I have no m's right here in this second term, so let's just write this as m. I've got n times n. That gives me n squared. And then I've got this y right here. There's no y there, so I only have one y, so I write that to the side. nm times ny gives me 1m, which was right here. And then I've got n times n, which was that n squared, and then I've got y plus 2p times this whole thing, okay? So 2, I've got a 2 multiplied by the understood 1 right here, right here, so 2 times 1 is just 2, and then mnp. Nothing's the same, so I just write it like that, mnp. Now here, the only way I could combine any of these is if they were like terms. None of these are like terms because this is like terms have the same variables raised to the same power. So I cannot combine these, so I'll leave it just like that. All right, and then my last one. Now, this is a negative xy, so I'm distributing to both terms here. This is two different terms. y squared is the first term. x squared z is the second term. So negative xy times y squared, okay? I've got a negative times a positive, which gives me a negative x, and then y times y squared. Remember, keep that, but we're multiplying two numbers that have the same base. This y is the same. Keep that base, don't touch, don't touch. Add that power, that's not asking too much. So y to the first, remember there's an understood one right there, y to the first, times y to the second gives me y to the third. So I've got xy to the third, and then here I've got a negative times. Remember, view that subtraction as a negative. I've got a negative times a negative, which gives me a positive x squared times x to the first gives me x to the third. And then yz, those two are not the same, so I just write them together. yz, x to the third, yz. These two are not like terms. I cannot combine them. Box in my answer, and I am done.